Hi, and welcome to our virtual salsa class. My name is Tara Murray, and you'll see my daughter Lily in the video clips recorded throughout this session. Today's session is, in, is going to include a lesson on making a grocery list. Our recipe for the day is going to be guacamole and chips. We'll do some physical activity, come back and try our guacamole, and then review our passport. So making a grocery list is a visual support that we use when we go to the grocery store so that we're reminded of all of the items that we'll need while we're there. So some ways to make a grocery list is to have a running list at home. So it can be a simple sheet of paper or a sticky note or a notepad. Uh, preferably you wanna keep this in the kitchen so that as you realize that things are, or items are running low, you can go ahead and go straight to the list and write it down. Another idea is to meal plan and decide what recipes that you're going to make throughout the week. And then you can look at those recipes and review the ingredients. So the recipes that you'll be looking for are things for breakfast, lunch, dinner, what kind of snacks you would wanna eat for the week. And when you're making your list, you wanna pay attention to how much of each ingredient or the quantity of each ingredient that you'll need for the recipe. You'll also wanna take uh, inventory of your staple items. So these are the items that you would be using most often in your recipes or things that you eat a lot throughout the week, maybe your favorite um, snack, your favorite food. So some staple items would be eggs, milk, butter, and canned goods. These ingredients are used a lot in uh, a majority of recipes. Another idea is to print out a grocery list template. So this helps you stay organized and there are many free options available. So we have a, um, a picture from Choose My Plate. This is an edible PDF so you can type in your ingredients and they're organized by fruits, grains, meats, others, vegetables. You can also use a visual support and you can put a check mark if you need those things and an X if you don't. So if you do not need eggs, you can put an X through it and you know that that's not something that you need from the grocery. But if you do need fruits and vegetables, you would put a check. And then we have some hyperlinks here so that you can uh, go through and pick out which one you like. There's tons available. We also have a list on the bottom of apps that you can download. Uh, there's about 10 or 11 different apps, either for iPhone or Android, most of which are free. And when you're making your grocery list, you want to plan out your trip. So visualizing what the store looks like and how you want to maneuver through it. So typically, you want to be um, typically you want to be going through the perimeter or the outside of the store. So let me get my anecdote here. So it's going to be the outside is where all of your fresh produce and your meats and your dairy and your breads will be. So it might not be this exact layout, but typically the outside or the perimeter of the grocery store is where you want to do most of your shopping. The inside aisles, that's where your canned, um, canned foods your non-perishable items, your processed foods are gonna be in the center aisles. So sometimes you'll need some ingredients from here in the, the center and that's okay, but most of the time you wanna to try to be getting your items from the outside of the perimeter of the store. And you'll always want to check your list before you leave for the grocery store. So reviewing the list to make sure that you have all of the items that you need. There's not anything that you forgot. And then when you're heading to the store on your way out, you want to make sure that you've got your list with you. You don't want to leave your grocery list at home. So today's um, recipe is going to be guacamole and chips. So before you handle any food, do any food prep or uh, eat any snacks or your meals, you want to make sure that you're washing your hands. 
So we've got Lily here demonstrating how to wash her hands. You want to make sure to turn the water on, get your hands wet, turn the water back off, use your soap, making sure to go palm to palm, getting the back of your hands, in between your fingers, the base of the thumb, underneath your fingernails, getting your wrist, and making sure that it's nice and soapy for about 20 seconds. And once those 20 seconds are up, you'll go ahead and turn on the water and rinse your hands clean. After you've got all of the soap off of your hands, you'll turn the water off and then go dry your hands. So the ingredients that we'll need from our pantry, is going to be our avocados, our red onion, tomato, a lime, and tortilla chips. So Lily's bringing the ingredients over to our working station. Getting all of the things that we need. And the tools that we'll need from our drawer or from our cabinets are our mixing spatula, we've got the fork, spoon, a cutting knife, our measuring cup, a bowl for mixing or serving, and then also our cutting board. So our first step is going to cut the avocado in half with a knife and use the spoon to scoop the guacamole or scoop the avocado into the mixing bowl. So since Lily is a little bit younger and not very comfortable with a sharp knife, I went ahead and did this part. So I'm putting the knife on the outside of the, the perimeter of the inside of the guacamole and slicing it into cubes. I find that that's just a little bit easier to get all of the guacamole out when it's time to scoop. You don't have to do it that way. But it's an option. And you wanna to try to get as much of the, of the avocado out as possible. Our step two is to mash the avocado with a fork. So we had a little bit of trouble with this. It's okay to let the avocado sit for a couple of minutes and kind of soften. And they have different tools to make it a little bit easier too. So it did take us a little bit of time and that was okay to mash all of the avocado. And this is definitely a preference too of how much you mash it. Some people like really chunky guacamole. Some people like really smooth guacamole. So you can decide how smashed you want your uh, avocado. And she's holding onto the bowl for support so that the bowl doesn't topple over as she's trying to work through getting all of the avocado nice and mashed. Our next step is to cut the tomatoes and put it into the mixing bowl. So again, with the sharp knife, I went ahead and cut and sliced the tomatoes. And do you wanna measure about a cup? We just happen to have one tomato, so that's what we use. And I separated the ends and pulled them aside so that that wouldn't be in the, um, the avocado mix. And being mindful of where my fingers are as I'm using the knife. It's really important to be uh, focused on what we're doing and not distracted when we're using sharp knives. 
And once I had them all cut up, I put the tomato into the mixing bowl. And we're going to, for step four, do the same thing, but with our red onion. So I'm doing the cutting. Those top layers, or the outside, needs to be peeled off. And then you'll go ahead and dice the onion once we've got that outer layer removed. And for the onion, you want to use about half of a cup. But again, you can do it based off of your preferences. So if you like a lot of onion, you can do a little bit more. If you're not a big fan of onion, you don't have to use as much. And so we measured oh, about a quarter cup and threw it in the mixing bowl. Our next thing is to put lime juice into our guacamole recipe. So we sliced the lime in half. I let Lily have a turn with the knife since it was one cut. And a trick that you can do before you cut it is to roll, press down onto the lime and roll it and try to loosen those um, lime juice or the, the juice in the lime before you cut it. And these were really tough limes, so she had to squeeze really, really hard. She did a great job. And again, you can use, um, the amount of lime juice you use can be based off of your preferences. We like the flavor of lime, so we use both slices. And now that we have the ingredients in the mixing bowl, we're gonna use the spatula and mix them all together as we make our guacamole. You can also leave the avocado pits into the mixture and that helps them stay green and not brown uh, as quickly. And then our last step is to open up our tortilla chips and have a taste. So if you were going to serve this guacamole to your friends or families, you'd wanna put the tortilla chips in a bowl first and then place the bowl of chips and the bowl of guacamole out for people to try. Uh, we just went ahead and opened up the, the chips because it's just us. So let's go ahead and put our guacamole in the refrigerator so it can stay cold and let's wash our hands before we go and do our physical activity. So again, we've got Lily demonstrating how to wash our hands. We're getting in between our fingertips or in between our fingers, under our fingernails, our wrists, She's getting them nice and sudsy for at least 20 seconds. You really wanna make sure that you're washing your hands for at least the 20 seconds to get all the bacteria and all the germs off. And then rinse once the 20 seconds is up, make sure all the soap is off your hands and then turn off the water. And let's go ahead and head over to whatever space that you're using for your physical activity. So before you do any workout, you wanna make sure to do a warm up. This is letting your body know that you're getting ready to do some physical activity. We're starting with some arm circles. You wanna do some dynamic movements. 
So this is the type of stretching where you're not holding, you're, you're moving as you're stretching. You're raising your body temperature a little bit. And starting slow. After you've done your arm circles, you can uh, do your chest and back stretch. So opening and closing the chest as we've got Lily doing here. And you want to do these exercises for about 30 seconds each. Nice big hug to yourself. Our third warm-up exercise is our torso rotation. So feet should be about shoulder width apart, hips should stay straight. And we're just rotating that middle section of our body, that torso, the abdomen, and going from side to side. So we're just letting our body know, hey, we're getting ready to do some, some activity. And moving on to our lower body warm up, we've got our high knees. So bringing our knee, one knee at a time, up towards our chest, making sure that our abs are staying tight. Starting off slow, and if we want to pick up some speed, we can. You can also put your arms out in front of you to use as a guide for how high you want your knees to go. And then we have our kickbacks. So with this one, you want to make sure that your knees are staying in line with each other. You've got a nice proud chest. So your chest is up, your head is neutral. And we're just kicking our feet back for 30 seconds. And then we have our leg swings. So with this one, you're gonna stand on one leg. You're going to bring the other leg past the midline of your body. So in front of that mid, that standing leg and then swing it out to the side. And you wanna make sure that you do both legs. So doing about 10 to 12 repetitions for each side before you switch. Okay, and that is our warm up. So we'll go ahead and do our full body workout. So we're going to do these five exercises for 30 seconds each. And then we're going to come back and do it three times total. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, take a break. One, two, three, four, five, take a break. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll do our cool down and we'll be all done. So we have a demonstration of Lily doing our first exercise for round one, which is our jumping jacks. So she's doing a higher impact version. You can do a low impact version by stepping out side to side instead of jumping. She's raising her arms as she's jumping and moving her legs out. And then her arms come down as she brings her feet back together. And so she's showing the modified version here stepping one leg out at a time. So you'll wanna pause this, do it for 30 seconds, and then come back for our second work uh, exercise. Perfect, so our second exercise is our push-ups for our chest press. We decided to do our push-ups against the wall. So we've got our feet together. The closer your feet are to the wall, the easier it's going to be. The farther your feet are from the wall, the more difficult it's going to be. So you can go ahead and pause the video, do your push-ups for 30 seconds, and then come back. Great, so our next exercise is going to be our squats. So our feet should be about shoulder width apart. We're going to make sure that our weight stays in our heel, so the back of the foot. And we're gonna pretend like we're sitting down in a chair 
making sure that our chest stays nice and proud. We don't want to round the back. So go ahead and pause for 30 seconds and let's come back. So our fourth exercise is our reverse lunges. So this is a lower body exercise. And the way that you do it is you start with your feet together, you take a step back, and then you lower your body close to the ground. You wanna make sure that back leg is just an inch or two above the ground, not actually touching it. And then you're going to stand back up, bringing your leg back to the center. So you're gonna alternate which leg steps back. Both knees should be at about 90 degrees when they're down. So go ahead and pause the video. Do your reverse lunges for 30 seconds. And we'll see you when you're back. So our last exercise for round one is our planks. With this one, you wanna make sure that your shoulders are not above or forward from your elbows, they should be in line with your elbows. A nice neutral neck, making sure that your abdomen stays tight. You wanna make sure that you're protecting your back by making sure your core is engaged. That belly button is pulling in towards the spine. You can do this on your toes or on your knees. You just wanna make sure that your hips aren't raised, they're parallel to the ground. Do that for 30 seconds and that's the end of round one. So go ahead, take a quick break, get a sip of water, catch your breath, and then when you're ready, we'll come back to round two. So we're gonna do those same five exercises again for about 30 seconds each, and then we'll take another quick break. So again, we have our jumping jacks. This is our cardio piece that's gonna help us get our heart rate up. Remember, you can do it either high impact or low impact by stepping out to the side or doing the actual jumping. Pause the video. Do your jumping jacks for 30 seconds and we'll see you when you're done. Nice, and once you're done with your jumping jacks, we have our push-ups or our chest press. So you can do your push-ups on the ground, either on your knees, those are your assisted push-ups, or on your toes. Making sure that your body stays nice and straight, the only movement should be in those elbows. And a little bit in the shoulders. Bending the elbows to lower your body to the ground, and then extending those elbows back up so that we're in that high plank. Let's pause, do for 30 seconds, and come back for exercise three. Great, so exercise three is our squats. We're moving into our lower body exercises. So we're pretending like we're sitting in a chair. Our knees shouldn't be going past the toes. Our weight should be in the heels of the back of the foot. Our chest should stay up. Our neck should be nice and neutral, making sure that our chin is off of the chest. Pause the video for 30 seconds while you do your squats. And restart for exercise four. Great, exercise four is our reverse lunges. So again, we're alternating which leg steps back and lowering. And then as we rise back up, we bring our legs back to the starting position. Let's pause the video, do our lunges for 30 seconds. And we've got one more exercise for round two. All right, we have our last exercise for round two is our planks making sure that our hips are parallel to the ground. Our neck is neutral, the shoulders aren't going past the elbows, we're engaging our stomach, our abdomen, our core. Pause the video, let's do our planks for 30 seconds and then we are done with round two, great job.
Awesome. So we've done two rounds of these five exercises. We're on our third and final round. So we just have these last five exercises that we're going to do, and then we'll do our cool down. So let's get started. So if we need it, ooh, before we get started, if at any time you need to take a break and get some water, go ahead and pause the video and then come back whenever you're rested and ready to finish. So we've got our jumping jacks for our first exercise of our last round. Getting our cardio in, our heart rate up. Pause the video, do your 30 seconds, and then come back and we'll talk about our chest press. So there are tons of variations that you can do with the chest press or the push-ups. You can do push-ups on your knees, on your toes. If getting down to the ground is and up and down from the ground is difficult, we can do our push-ups against the wall. Again, our feet being further away from the wall, the more difficult it's going to be. Our feet closer to the wall, the easier it's going to be. We're bending the elbows to lower our body. And then we're extending our elbows, making them back to straight to push off of the wall or the ground. So we've done our push-ups for 30 seconds. And then let's come back for our squat. So we're in the last little bit of our lower body exercises. We've got our squats. When you're ready, pause the video, do your squats for 30 seconds, and come back. All right, we have our last lower body exercise, exercise number four, our reverse lunges. You guys are doing great. Alternating which leg steps back. Remember our knees wanna be at about 90 degrees when they're lowered. And then as you rise back up, you'll wanna bring your feet back to the center. Pause the video, do your reverse lunges and come back for our last exercise of our workout. Wonderful, we have our last one, our planks. We've got 30 more seconds and then we go into our cool down. So making sure that our shoulders are in line with our elbows. The chin is not on the chest, it's nice and neutral, straight neck. Our abs are tight. We're using those core muscles. Pause the video, do 30 seconds, and then let's come back. Great job, guys. So now it's time to do our cool down. So these are the stretches that we're going to hold for about 15 to 20 seconds. So we'll start with our chest stretch. So bringing your hands behind your back. You can interlace your fingers together. You're gonna to roll the shoulders up and around. Nice round chest. Chin off of the chest. And once you've done that for about 15 to 20 seconds, we'll move to our upper back stretch. So we're gonna bring our hands in front of us now, interlacing the fingers and rotating them out. Feeling the shoulder blades of those muscles in the back pull apart. Rounding the back a little bit. You can drop your chin to the chest for this one. And then we can do our quad stretch. So pick one leg to lift up. You'll want to hold that uh, raised leg at about the ankle, making sure that your knees are in line and that knee is pointed down that you're holding. And once you've held this stretch for about the 15 to 20 seconds, you'll wanna make sure to do the other leg. So you'll switch. And then we have our hamstring stretch. So with this one, we'll start where we sit into our left leg. Our right leg is straight. The right toe is pointed up. You hinge forward so you, at the hips, 
you move forward and kind of sit into that left leg a little deeper and you should feel a pull, a little bit of a stretch in the back of that right leg. Once you do that for about 15 seconds, go ahead and switch sides. So now you're gonna sit into your right leg. So that right leg is gonna bend. The left leg will be straight. Your left toe is pointed towards the sky or the ceiling. You're gonna hinge forward at the hips. So bending into that right leg a little deeper and feel that stretch on the left straight leg. Our calf stretch. So with this one, so let's start with our right leg in front. The right leg that's in front is gonna be bent a little bit. The back leg, our left leg, is gonna be straight. And we're just lunging into that right leg a little bit. The heels of our feet should both be on the ground. And you'll feel a stretch in your left leg, that back straight leg, in the bottom back part of your leg, your calf. And then let's go ahead and switch sides. So now we're lunging forward a little bit with our left leg. So our left leg is in front. The left leg is bent a little bit. The right leg is now in the back and is straight. Both of our heels are down. There's that little lunge and you should feel the stretch now in the back bottom of your right leg. Wonderful, that was our cool down. So let's take two deep breaths. It's important to be breathing through all these exercises and stretches. So we want to breathe in through our nose like we're smelling a flower and exhale or blow out through our mouth like we're blowing out a candle. So take nice, two nice, big, deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. You did so great today with your exercise. Let's come back and try our guacamole and chips. So again, before we do any food prep or before we try any food or eat our snacks or our lunches or dinners, we wanna make sure that we're washing our hands. So just like we've done throughout the session, when we wash our hands, we wash our hands for about 20 seconds, turning on the water to get our hands wet, turning the water off, putting the soap in our hands, and moving it around, so palm to palm, making sure we're getting to the back of our hands, in between our fingers, underneath our fingernails, the base of the thumb, our wrist. Once we've done that for the 20 seconds, we turn the water back on to rinse our hands. Once all of the soap is off of our hands, we turn the water off, and then we dry our hands. Wonderful. So once we have washed our hands, let's get the guacamole out of the refrigerator and let's grab our chips and review our passport. So this is something that you can look over and to see um, what level of independence you needed for the guacamole. So were you able to follow the directions all by yourself or independently? Did you follow the directions with some help? Did you follow the directions with a lot of help? Or did you need to take a break and you just weren't able to complete the recipe at this time? So with Lily and I, we both needed some help. And then when we tried the guacamole, what did you think of it? So the red smiley face was, I didn't even want to taste it. The orange was, I tasted it and I didn't like it. The yellow smiley face or the yellow face was, I tried it and it was okay. The light green is the smiley face meaning that you tried it and it was good and then the dark green is you tried it and it was delicious it was really really good so go ahead and rate that and then you can also think of um, some ways that you can make it more enjoyable did you want to put some salt and pepper maybe some cilantro maybe not as many tomatoes how could you do it differently to make it something that you thought was delicious or really good Thank you so much for attending our virtual salsa class, going over our grocery list, our exercises, and our guacamole and chips. I hope you have a wonderful day. You literally just finished.